All right, shalom, shalom, Ras Tefari. Greetings, Ine, Ras Yadino Tefari, Name, Wendem Yadon Maletno. Um, I am Ras Ayadonis Tefari, Ras Yadon, Brother Yadon, um, reporting for the Lion of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty. And we are currently broadcasting on Ethiopian World Net. But in case of emergency, just type in 911 and um, subscribe to Ethiopian World Net 911. If, um, should this channel be off, you can maybe check us there. And we're also broadcasting on Rastafari Sabbatica. And that's for the Sabbath, the Torah portion, readings, and feedings. Now, this is particular subject matter kind of came up in kind of our search and, you know, while checking out what's on the YouTubes and um, updating I and I site, we came across this vid right here. This one, um, Helen Thomas, right, the former White House, uh, I think, uh, reporter correspondent. She um, spoke on a subject matter, and this video is named "The Real Jews Are Black People," right? And this was uploaded um, in 2010, and it's about a nine-minute clip. And then we have um, real Jews are black and some of the black icons, some of the historical um, documentation. And then there's um, other additional postings on this particular subject matter. A lot of people kind of, um, I guess, tweeted it, blogged it, shared it, so forth and so on. But what was really interesting to I and I, what was really interesting to us, and we're going to get into this right here, was when we click on it, let's see if we can click on this vid right here and bring it up. Okay, here's here's the vid, right? The vid should be coming in just now. Let's, okay, by Humble Guy 2, right? That's um, uh, Helen Thomas and... She's basically, um, let's see if we can bring up the sound a little bit here. Germany. And, and America and everywhere else. Well, because we're so heavily biased in favor of Israel, and the whole world knows it. And they're astounded by it. They can't, they can't comprehend why America with this great traditions would close its eyes to the dreadful punishment that we have enabled Israel to inflict on virtually defenseless people. Feminist movement has accused the Israeli government of adopting a racist policy towards the country's Ethiopian Jews. Activists believe black women are deliberately being given a controversial contraceptive to bring about a drop in the population that claim the government denies. Thousands of Ethiopians have immigrated to Israel since the 1980s, but their Jewish heritage has been questioned while their social status continues to suffer. For nearly four years, Rocheli Mangoli has been running a youth center in one of Israel's poorer communities. All right, no. Ethiopian families live here, but throughout that entire time, only one Ethiopian baby was born in this neighborhood, and that alarmed Rocheli. Because I find something not good. Uh, I know about the, the discrimination here. When I'm going with the children, I feel this. Even when I'm going to buy something in the super. Uh, All right. Um, we're not going to get into the vid. I don't know if you could, would even hear that first part of it. Um, but go check it out on the YouTubes while it's up there. It's been up there for a moment, and I'm sure other people have um, posted and reposted it. This here is talking about um, some eugenics, uh, Deprovera, and some eugenics policy. Now, we already know this sort of eugenics policy has been going on in America, even the whole planned um, genocide, I mean, parenthood, you know, genocide. Basically, Margaret Sanger's and the whole eugenics, the racism, the white supremacy, the false doctrine. I mean, we can even trace this straight to the, its 
you know, demonic sources. I mean, I mean, this is extermination of a group of people. And this is what we have to really understand about this. When we're speaking about the issue of um, black Jews or, or, or black Hebrews or the original Hebrews or their descendants, we the ones lost but now found Beta Israel today. So there's a lot of evidence, even though the evidence is, of course, dismissed by either the perpetrators or those who endorse and support and have not repudiated this genocide. Even they haven't even really addressed it, even though there's there's abundant sort of evidence. So anyway, this particular clip was named that Helen Thomas speaks on the real Jews are black people. And here's something from... Um, um, one of the news, I think a Russian-related uh, news site that basically is speaking about how the dubious birth control policy within the state of Jezreel, or so-called Israel, is leading to a drop in the number of, um, of Ethiopian, Hebrew, black, Jewish, Judahite babies. All right, and there's and there's so much more on this. I mean, the whole world knows this, and there's a lot of unfortunately, there's a lot of lost sheeple, and I, I suspect that some of the black people in America, you know, when we re recognize how this whole slavery and 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 um, um, the trans Ethiopic Ocean slave trade was really done, there was a lot of other people as um, who was that? And give me the loot, give me the loot. I think it was. Um, um, Biggie, Biggie, uh, notorious B.I.G. You remember what he said? Been ro give me the loot, give me the loot. You remember that tune? You can check it out there on the YouTube saying, Been robbing, robbing you niggas. I think something like you've been robbing you since the slave ship with the same whip, some lyric like that. So there's, there's some who are amongst us who are not, um, Hebraic. You know what I'm saying? So all black people in America, and all black people are not uh, Beta Israel, but there is a remnant. You see, one of the best tests to really, you know, one of the best, best tests basically is that those who don't receive it, right, those who cannot receive it, you know, even after much persuasion and evidence and prefer to be the hyphenated African so-called Americans and, you know, who dismiss this, most likely are not. And even if um, genetically or DNA, if we would look at it like that, though so DNA is a mother expletive, deleted, deleted, we're not going to really go there because we don't have our own laboratories to fact check a lot of these so-called um, spurious DNA find. So what we're going to look at this is from a more biblical and a, a, a historical and, 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 and from the, the evidence. Now, this is another news story which speaks about the Jezreeli treatment of the Ethiopian uh, Hebrews, so-called Ethiopian Jews, um, that leaves a, a lot of uh, opinions divided. Now, this is also another another clip here. So uh, a few different clips were um, put together. Let's see if we can um, open this right here. Let's see if we can open this up before this clip goes off right here. But check out the clip for yourself. Find a way to attribute it to outside white 
that the black man once dominated most of the civilized world only to suffer a tragic downfall of mm. epic proportion. Let the journey begin. Mm. There's a lot of, uh, there's this guy, I think this guy right here, who tries to say, uh, I think he does a video where he tries to, he tries to dispute um, um, the original Jews were not black, and I think he's Sephardi or something like that. You know, but all this evidence, they don't dispute that evidence. They'll get it involved in some sort of other argument, but it, we've kind of... Um, this is digress a little bit from the point. What we saw in here was another very interesting point where they were speaking about the Bible. And I hear this from some, um, I think, some uh, Hebrew Israelites sometimes, some of the Hebrew Israelites. Let's go and see all of this right here. All right, let's go see all of this. And let me see if I can find the comment. All right, the particular comment. I'm sure many of y'all have heard this uh, sort of comment before, and um, perhaps you didn't have a, a a good response because you didn't have a a good idea of the subject matter. Now, um, one had said that um, <clears throat> when the Bible says, right, the prophet um, Amos or Amos, when he says that. Um, um, aren't you speaking on behalf of Yahweh, of, of Hashem Baruch Hu, speak on behalf of the one who you will call L-O-R-D, or Lord, to say the Almighty, right? That are you not like the Ethiopians unto me? Now, here's the scripture. Here's the scripture right here. Let's see if we can bring up the scripture. Um Right, um, let's see if we can bring this part up here because there's a lot of comments. There's about 658 comments on this particular vid right here. And it's kind of interesting if you have the time. We didn't have the time to go through all the comments, but we did glance a few of them, and we found one particular comment which said, well, what what the, what God is saying? The person is now speaking for God, right? And they said that what God is saying is that the Ethiopians look, or the, or the or the true Jews or the true Israelites look like the Ethiopians. And I've heard this from many so-called um, um, Hebrew Israelites, and and we're not doubting whether they are. What we're doubting is their the, the real knowledge about the subject matter beyond the basic kindergarten level. Now, of course, some will take this insulting, but it says if you reprove a wise man, uh, he will love you. And if you um, reprove a fool, he will hate you. And that's, that's basic there, right? That's basic uh, proverbs there. Let's see if we can move this along. 
because this thing is trying, okay, you see how that, we have to go to another window right here. Um, but we're, we're going to go and get your Bibles, get your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture and brothers and sisters. And we're just going to touch on this. We said before the Shabbat comes in, let's touch on this particular subject matter, if we will. It, it appears the machine is um, giving us, um, you know, the technology, technology. But be that as it may, um, there might be some books here that we can um, show in the meantime. Uh, such as um, uh, Rudolf R. Windsor's um, From Babylon to Timbuktu, which is a very, very good book, um, as well as Valley of the Dry Bones, another very good and important book for anyone who is beginning out in these uh, sort of studies. It's an excellent work and a resource uh, to touch on. Okay, this 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 thing right here is really it's kind of froze at this particular page, and um, if you'll bear with I and I, and we can get this uh, get this page moving along. In fact, let's see if we can go to another page for a moment. Okay, here's the blue letter Bible, right? Or well, that particular page does its thing. Or whatever thing it's going to do. Let's go to um, Ethiopians, right? Let's just look up Ethiopians, uh, Ethiopians right here. And let's go right here. Ethiopians and Israel, or Israel, right? And we're in the King James, we're using the King James version of the Bible as a basic, right? And let's go down here. Okay, you see this verse right here? You see this verse, front and center? All right. This verse right here is in Amos 9 and 7. It says, Are ye not as children? Notice this, this key thing right there. Children. I want you to pay careful attention because one thing we notice is that a lot of folks are reading, but a lot of folks don't seem to have um, any reading comprehension. Okay, that's good right there. All right? So they're reading these things. And, and we noticed this in school when we were, you know, young and growing up and had tests. You know, a lot of folks would do very poorly on reading comprehension. So they were reading, but they were not able to comprehend what they're reading. So we saw on this other page over here where... um one had made the comment that what is meant in this verse, where it's saying that um, the Lord or Yahweh, right? Yahweh has said, Baruchu, blessed be he, are ye, which means you all, ye is not one person, ye is speaking to many. It says, are ye not, like aren't you, as children, key, children of the Ethiopians to me, not unto, unto, you should strike out that un, because un, when you say un is like not to, it's like un, unclean, undone, unkind, unwise, you, you always, it means not to, that's a little, that's a little, um, magic trick that was put in there. A lot of folks might not get it because they don't understand the reading comprehension. Unto means not to. All right? Unto means not to. Now, if you was ignorant of it and, and you pray that way, no doubt you didn't know. But now that you know, you have to, you have to upgrade your understanding to what you know if you recognize the truth of that. So we're going to read it as it should be read, just taking out that un. Like we're not going to say L-O-R-D, which is a white supremacist slave massa, right, or bankster. You understand who, who, who funded the captivity of I and I, of our people, the once lost but now found Beta Israel. Okay, this page is still not going through here. We had a couple of pages. We had a couple of pages um, ready to show you, but we'll hopefully be able to come 
um, around to it again if possible. But let's just deal with this right here. It says, are ye, which mean y'all, more than the one, plural, are ye not as children, the key right there, children of the Ethiopians to me, O children of Israel, saith Yahweh, Baruch Hu, blessed be he, saith the sustainer, right? Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt? He didn't say he brought up Israel out of the land of Ethiopia. He he brought Israel out of the land of um, Europe, out of the land of Asia, a specific country. So the Ethiopians, though they're related to the Egyptians, they are not the same people. Now, that whole Ham, Shem, and Japheth thing, you have to be... Well, first of all, let's say this. It is speaking of genealogies. But a lot of this Ham, Shem, and Japheth thing is, is, is a modern invention. And a lot of the Hebrew Israelites, they base a lot on that. Not saying what the Bible is saying is untrue. It is true. But they base a lot of this, it's almost like the hate that the hate produce, right? Because the Europeans have fostered this idea of the, the evil Hamite and have turned the testimony of the Scripture into a modern, evil, twisted mythology. So a lot of, a lot of the, the, the brothers with the Hebrew Israelites now take that same paradigm and they it, it almost imagine that one child was like black and one child was like white and one child was like, say, Chinese or Asian. That's not how it was. They all were what we would call today black peoples, you know what I'm saying, or peoples of color. Now, I say black, and I say black within, for example, some would say that ham means black. It doesn't mean black. If you know Hebrew, ham means warm, right? Ham ma'od, it means very warm. So let's understand that at the outset. In Hebrew, um, shachor, it means black, you understand when speaking of um, a color, if we would. But this whole idea about race and even racism that we look at look at it from a modern perspective is all because of white supremacist doctrine. It's all because of 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 the devil, basically. You understand deceiving white people into this. Um, white supremacist philosophy, you understand, and thereby taking them into captivity. You see, yes, Europeans and white folks are in a slavery, not the same as the slavery that their forefathers committed to the lost sheep of the Beta Israel, but it is a slavery all the same. So let's move on right here. Now, see, it's important in order to dismiss this, and this window is still not coming up, um, and we have some pictures in order to show you a little bit of the Ethiopians and from one of the Hebrew um, Israelite heritage site, a very good informative site. We would really highly recommend, excuse me, that ones um, check it out for themselves. Right? So right here, as it goes on, the verse goes on, it speaks about how Yahweh, how Yah delivered the Philistines from Kaftor and the Syrians from Kir or Kur. Now, what's interesting, if you understand um, a history or our story in its proper context, all of these were what we would consider today, if we were to see them in their ancient,cy we would consider them to be black peoples. Now, the differences are their respective nationalities, are their r respective, um, we can call it ethnicities. But if we were to look at it from a modern paradigm, all of the peoples mentioned here in the ancient context of the book of Amot or Tinbite Amot, the prophet Amos, 
they were black peoples. So see, we have to really kind of ground that particular idea. So there is a modern view, which has been shaped largely by um, global white supremacy, by the Gentile world dominion. And then there is the ancient context. And that is what is lost when most folks, okay, here we go here. I think this page might have... Um, might have opened up the ancient context of their racial and saying what was their racial characteristic even the term racial in a sense is strange when we look at it based on the modern paradigm you see there has to be a paradigm shift when you are studying the bible because if you do not see it in its context and seek to understand its true historical context, that's what leads to a lot of the rhetoric today, a lot of um, the confusion, the chaos, and, and, and even on, on some levels, some of the violence unnecessarily, even within groups, because many of us as Ethiopian Hebrews are those who recognize that we black peoples here in America are of that remnant of the Beta Israel, we're the Falashas, if you will, of the West, are even amongst ourselves divided. You understand? In the different camps of whether Ethiopian Hebrews, whether Hebrew Israelites, whether black Jews, Yovas, and, and that should not be so if we are all grasping the same truth in its historical context. This does not mean that we would all um, be in the same camp, you know what I'm saying, or even the same tribe, you know what I'm saying. However, there's a dysfunction amongst we as Ethiopian Hebrews, as as the Falashas, the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, which is a particular tribe, you know what I'm saying? They call themselves Beta Israel because they still identify the house. See, in my father's house, in Abba's house, there are many mansions. So now, is it true that this verse is only speaking of what the Israelites look like? As many um, black Hebrew Israelites, our brothers, and they are our brothers, whether they acknowledge us or not, Yovas, whether they acknowledge us or not, Abba acknowledges us. Father Abraham, no doubt, also acknowledges us. Now, if we look at the, some of the physical characteristics, you see the pages went off. I mean, who knows that they've been taking down a lot of pages, a lot of websites, so we don't know whether the page went off or our machine is somewhat. Okay, here we go right here. Here we go right here. Let's see if we can bring this up. Okay, this is the site that we were, this is the site that we were seeking to refer you to. Let's see if we can move this over right here, right? This is the site that we were seeking to um refer you to right here. Okay, this this window definitely is 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 bad right here. So I I I apologize brothers and sisters. Um the site is Hebrew Israelites dot O R G. Okay, here it comes in a little bit better. All right. Let's just go through this right here. All right. This is this is today's date. And um we we'll to get into this before the Shabbat, right? The physical appearance of ancient Israel, the Hebrews, and the sons of, of Ham, or of Ham, but really Ham. Um, and there's a, a whole lot of information right here, including a map of the region. You see the, the, the red, gold, and green, kind of interesting right there as well. All right, um... Let us continue down here. This is the the tribes. See the tribes right here, right? See the tribes right here. 
All right. Um, some of the propaganda out there, the historians. All right. And some of the verses, right, of the evidence. Um, Pharaoh's daughter adopting um, Mashu, Moses, Muse, um, uh, drawing, uh, temple drawing of Pharaoh. Uh, actually, Pharaoh, Pharaoh means the great house. It's not really a title, as some on the next blog actually said. Pharaoh or Fer, Fer, Per, On means the great house, like saying the White House, so to speak. But anyway, let's go on. You, you see this, the, the truth, right? The truth of the racial type versus the lie of the so-called um, media. Let's see if we can bring this up a little bit so you can see this a little bit clearer for yourself, right? The truth versus the lie. All right. In other words, this, you can see, is the actual sultan, right, or the actual nigus, the actual king, right, of of that pharaoh, right, the king of that pharaoh, of that great house. And this was actually taken from the, 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 the monuments, right, this is actual um, forensic evidence. And now this is the counterfeit lie. I mean, you can just clearly get to see this image, right? Right here is is is, is Hollywood's um, lie about the Hebrews, right? Distorting the true image of the Hebrews and the ancient Egyptians, right? And the movie is called uh, the the Ten Commandments, and you've heard. Brothers and sisters who follow I and I postings and lectures, you've heard us um, teach that actually it was not ten commands, it was ten words. The Asher Tekalat Baumarinya, right from the Gutter's root, it was the Asher Tekalat, or in English it's often called the Decalogue. The Decalogue is the Decalogos, or the ten words. So when we say ten commands, we, 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 we're saying and we're speaking erroneously. It is one command, one command, right? Those are ten words of that one command. And we went into detail on it uh, elsewhere. But let's see if we can get through this because there's a lot that we want to share with you, brothers and sisters, just to give you some, you know, some some snapshots right here, right? Some snapshots right here, Um Right, some snapshots right here. All right, this is the uh, the reconstruction, the real reconstruction of what King Tut looked like. Right, and there's also a vid about Tut fakes. We haven't um, um uh, published that, released that one yet, but Tut fakes, some of the most recent of the fakes right there. Um, reconstruction of Nefertiti. Now, some even are saying that Nefertiti quite possibly could be the one we call um, Elizabeth in the Bible or, or Jezebel. I mean, this is interesting. It's very interesting. I know it's contra con there's a controversy around that, even just to state that. But it's something that there's some pages out there. Others have um, speculated on it. But we also provide some original um, primary source evidence on that particular topic matter, whether um, Nefertiti really was or has a link to the Jezebel of the Bible, and that might explain some of the mystery concerning um, Queen Nefertiti in that particular um, reign of Unkenunten. But let's go on. All right, this is from, um, this is uh, uh, Imani right here. I think she's Somalian. Right, we can say of the Ethiopic peoples, but of the Somalian nationality. All right, um, as we go further down here, well, you all know about this, right? The so called um, the Ten Commandments um, movie with Charleston Heston, Cold Dead Hands, Charleston Heston. Notice something. In the movie, the scene where Moses puts his hand in the Bible into his bosom, 
and pulls it out and it's leprous, it's white as snow, and then he puts it in again and pulls it out and it turns to his other flesh. They deleted that particular um, scene in the movie. It's not very accurate, but it is a, a, a great story, a great lie that Hollywood tells. But let's go on right here. Now, of course, this is more accurate to what Moses actually looked like. And this is what Hollywood, folly would want you to believe. And unfortunately, the devil, Satan, that old dragon, has deceived the whole world. All right? Even all this evidence that we can present in other brothers and sisters have presented is still not accepted by the vast majority of those who have not received the love of the truth. Now, Miriam, she did not look like any of these um, young women, these Canaanitish women right here. She didn't look like this. She didn't look like this. She didn't look like this. But if we would look at the scripture, the forensic matter of history, archaeology, the art and facts, the artifacts, um, we should begin to understand that these images, right, uh, give a more accurate description of the Hebrew Israelite maiden, right, these particular images right down here. Now, let's go on. I mean, it's established fact in the Bible, as they mentioned right here, that... Um, this whole idea of whiteness actually is related to um, Hansen's disease or what they call the old-time leprosy. Now, we've touched on this before, and it's a very controversial issue because it's so factual. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it just makes everything very much more clear. But you can go through that on your own. Here's an albino, an albino child in Africa, which shows how the... Other races that we know as other races today actually comes from that ancient Ethiopic black race and, and Egyptian and the African is very much at the center of it. Strange how things get so turned upside down. Now they call this a vitiligo. Elsewhere it's called vitiligo. And like we said, we're not going through all the detailed information here, but you can check out this page for yourself, the physical appearance of the Beta Israel, right? Um, this is a black man, right? This is a black man that actually turns white. So we see um, scientific evidence of what's in the Bible that better helps us to understand and comprehend the true context of this particular sensitive um, issue. All right. Now, as we go on, as we go on, ancient Egypt, Paul is considered, um, he's asked, art thou that Egyptian? Right. But he explains how he's a Hebrew. So aren't you that Egyptian? Paul, right, in the Bible, he was mistaken for people who actually right, who actually, if we would look at it, who actually, right, let's see if we get a, who actually look like this, all right, now even in the New Testament, we have where an angel of Yahweh tells um, Joseph to take the young child, Yeshua, and his mother, Mariam, to flee into Egypt, right, because the Edomite, Herod, right, was seeking to kill him. All right, now, as it was then, so it is now. Now, this is this is the, you know, the false counterfeit images right here that so many people are used to. Here's a scholar that actually um, bears witness to this. He does a very good um, analysis of the information. All right, and then we come down here to emerge magazine, right, with a, a um, is Jesus black as the question on it. Now, we only have a few more, I guess, minutes in this. Um, so um, I apologize about, you know, the stalling on the machine, the computer early that took some time out while we were trying to figure that out and while we allowed the camera to, to, to roll on that. Now, we are actually going to part two page, but while that comes up, let's go here. Now, like we said, 
many ones think there's some there's some ones think that actually this verse right here let's move this right here that this verse right here is only saying that the Israelites are black like the Ethiopians. No, it's not saying that. It's not saying here that Yahweh says that, well, the children of the Ethiopians look like the children of Israel. That's not the point. From Yahweh's perspective, Baruch Hu, blessed be he, he's saying that, are you not as? He's saying to the children of Israel, he, he's actually putting the children of the Ethiopians in this prophetic context in the primary. You know what I'm saying? I've used this sort of example before. It's like if a man um, had two wives, and the first wife, he's saying to um, the first wife, if he says to one wife, are you not as the other woman to me? He is comparing her, right? So who is being compared to who, right? The children of Israel are being compared to the children of the Ethiopians. So who, according to this verse, does he have the closer connection in this prophetic context? It is the children of the Ethiopians. He's saying to the children of Israel, aren't you like them to me? Aren't you like them? Notice that. He's qualifying the true children of Israel, Bani Yisrael, by comparing them to the Bani Kushim, right? The Bani Kushim. Now, if you were to go a little bit further, let us see if we can bring this up right here. Um, I'm told that we have only a couple more minutes in this particular clip, so just giving one's a heads up. If you go to this search right here, let's bring this down into frame, right? Amos 9 and 7. If you click on this C right here, this is the concordance in the Hebrew or the Greek lexicon, New Testament, Greek, Old Testament, the Hebrew. If you click right there, you will actually get to see some of the Masoretic, the traditional Hebrew. Now, this is very interesting. This is the verse right here, right? Now, just to, for having to go through a, a big Hebrew lesson, if you go down here, they have the English King James column over here. Then they have the Strong's numbers right here for ones who are studying, right? And then here it has the, the root form of the Hebrew. So although he says children, by name, right, singular is bane, right? Here of the Ethiopians, it says Kushi. Now, the interesting thing about Kushi today, today, if you see a video, it's called, um, I think, uh, Racism, Africans in Israel. You can check it out on the YouTubes. It's out there. Check it out. We highly advise after this, just go and check out that particular vid. Um, and there's other vids that also explains how they call any black person in the state of Jezreel, uh, Israel is called a kushi, especially in a derogatory sense. That word is like saying nigger, right? And then you see, once again, Bain here. You see Yishrael, right? You see Naum, right? He saith, they say uh, Yehovah. That's the V they add in. They turn the W into a V, like they turn the B into a V. Both of them can't be a, a V. It's Yahweh. And we know that because of looking at and studying the primary Ethiopic scrolls. Remember, Yahweh said, aren't you children of Israel like to me? Like in, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians? But let's get this word like right here. It's very important to understand, well, what is the word like? Right? Are you not as? That's what's said. Not like, aren't you as, as, just, that's like an equal sign. You know, let's, let's recognize that, right? And then the other nations are mentioned here. We just wanted to get through this because we know that we only have a couple more minutes. But the main 
um, the main point about this particular area of scripture. This is one of the, it's very conclusive, but it's interesting, yet it's ironic, and yet it's wrong when many of our black Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters say, well, that verse is only important in the sense that Yah is saying that the only similarity is that they're black. You are looking at it, I have to say it ass backward. You know what I'm saying? You need to ride the donkey forward. Stop going backward. All right? Now, here, this is, this is a continuation right here of the parents of the Hebrews and the sons of Ham. Right? Just to go through some of these ticks right here. What the Israelites look like. That's right there, the Ethiopians.